greens, blues, purples. One of these in here just has to be perfect for the car. And I feel like that decision has to be the hardest step of this whole process. It just feels like such a commitment. I don't know what else really could top it. Maybe I'm just scared to pick the wrong one. Still, there's gotta be an easy way to know which color is right for this car. In my head, it's like I could almost see any of these working, but that can't be right. If only there was an easier way to pick. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, aren't I? It's not like having the color ready is gonna do any good unless the car is ready to actually be wrapped. I almost forgot just how far down in the process this needs to be decided by. And it's not like it has to be done exactly in order, but I think I'm just getting too excited. It's not like these are the PPF colors anyways. These are just vinyl samples. The PPF ones will show up later this week. In other words, I guess there really is no point in worrying about a color just yet, even if I'm still convinced that that choice is gonna be the hardest part of this whole ordeal. It just doesn't have to be made quite yet. Everywhere I look, I seem to see potential. A blue here, a green there. And what makes this decision so hard is the fact that the E30 is simple enough that it could probably pull any of them off. The car needs to be prepped before I can even really think about that. Still, I find it hard not to be excited when the car's looked like it does for as long as it has. Not bad necessarily, but definitely in need of a bit of love. The truth remains the same, however. While I'm waiting for the PPF samples to arrive, I need to make the most of my time. In other words, actually getting the car prepped, starting by removing all the trim. This isn't going to be my first time wrapping a car. It'll be my third, but this time might not be quite as comparable because the material is just different. PPF has a hybrid application and vinyl is completely dry. But just like the color, worrying about that is far out on my radar. Right now I just need to focus on getting this car as prepped as I can to be the best wrap I've ever done. I definitely don't think it'll be perfect, but I can absolutely learn from my mistakes that I made last time. I can't beat myself up about it too much though. Back then I was antecedently ignorant after all. I just didn't know. This time, however, this time will be different. I want to learn from my mistakes and go further than I did last time, even if that means spending more time in prep, stripping the car down even further. And the more I look at this thing, the more I realize just how far it's gotta go. Despite that effort, I do think it'll be worth it in the end.
Plus, unlike the Audis, this one seems to be held entirely together with Phillips screws and clips. So it's not like taking this car apart is a rather difficult affair. Really, it's just a lesson in simple engineering. A car built to be easy to maintain. This trim's got me thinking though. Reds and blues are cool, but what about a black or a gray? Too subtle? Too quiet? Eh, either way I'm getting ahead of myself. tried to improve with every car wrap that I've done. And even though this won't be the same material or application process, there are lessons that I can take from my previous experience. With the past cars, there were a number of times where I should have taken trim off, and instead I just wrapped around it. And while it did work, I really just set myself up for a worse result. The quality of the edge was directly proportional to how straight I could cut it, as opposed to simply removing the trim and hiding the edge completely underneath it once it's reinstalled, making it look perfect rather than good. A little extra work now for a much better result down the road seems like a pretty good deal. I think out of all my cars, this is the only one that could pull off a truly bright color. It's just got such simple body lines and simple styling that something like a red, a yellow, it just wouldn't look out of place. And sure, these vinyl samples aren't the right color, but they could at least help me narrow down a primary color. And the more time I spend with the hardest part, the better. Picking the perfect color is no easy feat. Reds, orange, glossy, flat, matte, bright, dull, Maybe even some sort of a bronze, or a copper. A copper. I guess whatever color I pick doesn't matter if I don't fix the rust. If I ignore that too much longer, eventually, copper rust is the only choice I'll be able to make. Which means I've got to do some bodywork for pretty much the first time. Huh. I mean, it's not like that's harder than picking a color, right? I mean, shouldn't it just be as simple as sanding the rust down until it's no longer there? Then it's bare metal, and it can't spread anymore if it's not there, I think. Yeah, I mean, that sounds right. Just sand off the paint and pray it doesn't go too deep. Maybe, maybe I should look this up before just jumping in. I know this paint can't be saved, but this still feels wrong jumping in blind. What started as a quick and simple trip to Google led me directly to the center of a rabbit hole. From what I can tell, bodywork shares more in common with art than it does with skill. It's something that takes years to master, with difficulty ranges along the whole way. Sanding a flat panel with rust is easy, 
if you catch it early. The deeper you go, the more you have to reshape the lines of the car. It could be as simple as sanding the top off and sealing it, or you could be shaping sheet metal to replace an entire part of the car. You just don't know how difficult it'll be until you see just how bad it really is. Recreating the body lines is a whole lot worse than simply refinishing the top of them. So right now, I'm hoping for the latter. Either way, one thing is abundantly clear. No matter how much time I spend on it, since for the most part it's a first attempt at bodywork, it's just not gonna be perfect. And that's gonna have to be something I accept going into it. Sure doesn't mean what I'll learn from trying won't be worth it though. Can't be worse than the car resting away after all. My original thought process was right to some degree. I'll have to sand the rust down until it's no longer there. Then I need to seal and protect the bare metal. I can't just do the outside of the car though. I need to figure out the extent of where that rust has spread already. And from what I can tell, it all stems from the fenders, which seem to be poorly rolled by the previous owner. My guess is the paint split when this was originally done, and they never bothered to cover it up. Then all the other spots are simple rock chips which have oxidized over time. From what I can tell, the pitting has only started happening in a couple places. This should, at the moment, just be surface rust. And I should just be able to sand it down until I see bare metal. I need to understand that this is for the best. Even if I can't make it perfect, I can make it a whole lot better and learn in the process. As I was sanding both fenders, I was pretty grateful. It looks like I really did catch the rust fairly early. The only spot it was deep was on the inside of the wheel well, both on the folded lip and behind it. The only way I could really reach that was with the wire wheel. But it was also behind the fender, so I didn't care too much what it looked like. Anything that would be seen, I sanded with fine sandpaper and a lot of time. Eventually though, I got to the point where I couldn't see any more rust. All of the edges where the metal transitioned to paint showed no signs of oxidation, so I was good to spray the rust performer. I used an aggressive one for behind the wheel well, and used clear preventative on the part of the car that's going to be seen, the actual fender itself. This will help a bit in it not oxidizing in the future, but to truly seal it, I'm going to want to spray primer. And this is an anti-rust automotive primer, basically designed to seal in sheet metal. It initially went on pretty thick, but after a little bit of wet sanding once it was dry, it feels just as smooth as the rest of the surface. It's not perfect, but... It definitely bought this car a whole lot longer of a lifespan. Sadly, something tells me that's not gonna be the hardest body work that I'm gonna have to deal with. Turns out I've gotta repair some body lines too. The small dent on the back of the car. Other than the rust, this is the most egregious issue that this body has. And from my research, it's probably going to be a lot harder than I was originally thinking, especially as a beginner. It's not just a simple dent, it's buckled, and there are multiple body lines broken because of it. Just a simple sanding to remove the surface rust reveals just how bad it really is, at least with respect to getting it flat. It's caved in both up top and on the bottom, but because there was a protruding section, the top line is caved up and the bottom line is caved down, so there's a lot of reshaping that needs to be done. And while initially my plan was to simply fill it with Bondo, which would look good if I spent enough time sanding, I've learned that that isn't really the proper way to do this. I should be trying to use as little Bondo as I possibly can. In other words, some persuasion is in order. From what I can tell, bodywork itself is pretty interesting. In concept, everything is so simple. It's the execution that makes it difficult. It sounds simple to say, take a hammer and make the body line straight again. Take a mallet and make this flat. But actually doing it is what gets hard. Knowing how to look at the metal and read the creases to understand where you need to apply pressure is something that only really happens when you spend time doing it. The closest thing I can really compare it to is sculpting, which ironically, I've spent a lot of time doing, but it's not a direct correlation. And this is by no means gonna end up like a sculpture. I'm going into this fully understanding that the hammer is not going to make this panel flat. That's something that just takes years of practice to master. My goal right now is just to make it better, no matter how long that takes.
With the metal reshaped as much as I felt comfortable with, it was time to bring out the Bondo. And while reshaping the metal took the majority of my day, the impact that had on the Bondo step is tremendous. When I was reshaping the metal, my goal was not to make it flush with the original body lines. I knew I wasn't using the right tools, and I knew that it would never be perfect that way. So my goal was something that Bob Barker would have been proud of, as close as I could get it without going over. Rather than building the surface out of layers of Bondo, since the metal's already close, I simply have to smooth it out with it. And this is also a step which is difficult and going to take forever. This is the part where I'm actually re-sculpting the body lines that I'll be able to see. So any imperfections or irregularities here are going to be seen. Plus, Bondo takes forever to cure. So while I'm waiting, fixing other rust spots on the car is something I'm going to be doing. I'm going layer by layer, finding issues and fixing them, filling holes and sanding down peaks. The hardest part by far is making sure that it looks correct from every angle, but the shape of the car itself helps to some degree. Since the E30 is such a boxy car, I've got some straight lines to play with. They should be straight from every dimension except for top down. Sometimes just looking at a situation from a different perspective is all you really need to see what's wrong. The only real downside to doing this is just how long it's taking. Well, just like the rust, this isn't perfect, but it is a night and day improvement over what it was before. I've still got some pinholes, but the Bondo I have is too thick to fill them, so I need to get some body glaze. Either way, even though this was one of the hardest things I've tried, and it didn't turn out perfect, it was fun to spend time learning, and it's even better to be able to see the results of doing that. Blues, greens, oranges, purples. Now I'm starting to wonder if that perfect color even does exist. Maybe that's just relative to the person picking it. But based on how long this bodywork took me, and how bad the rest of the car is, something tells me I've got a little bit more time before I've got to worry. I don't know if it really matters what I pick though. After all, anything can be an improvement if you look at it from the right mindset. And the way I see it, this car can only get better. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. That's the best way you can help support me and my content. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.